Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Randall and I'm one of Diane's former gymnasts. I have to bear with me, I am not a public speaker and I am very nervous. I'm shaking right now, so. Okay. <laughs> um, I understand you guys are looking to hear me talk about Diane and how wonderful of a person she was to me. But if you don't mind, I would like to take this time to talk to her. Here we go. Dear Diane, my warrior, my mentor, my coach, my friend, I never thought that our relationship would grow to what it become, especially considering the fact that you didn't even want to take me on as your gymnast. <laughs> Quick little story. Um, for those who don't know, my mom literally had to beg Diane to take me as her gymnast, literally like sitting outside like shopping me out to this woman. <laughs> and um, everyone at that point um, in her gym work was homegrown. So she wasn't, you know, ready to take on um, any gymnasts from any other gyms because she, you know, you know, she wanted to have her own, right? So my mom was trying to convince her that, um, you know, I was a decent enough gymnast. I just needed the right training. And Diane, in her own voice, was like, I know who she is. <laughs> so long story short, um, <laughs> she allowed me to join the team soon after. All right, back to Diane. Okay. We had a love-hate relationship during training, and you better believe I knew and understood that. One thing that she made very clear to me was pretty much along the lines of what happens in the gym stays in the gym. There was a time where um, I was actually put down two levels in gymnastics because I would not do my connection on beam. I was terrified of beam. So the connection was back handspring, back handspring. And I came into her gym training nine. I thought I was everything too, let me tell you. And Diane quickly shut that down. And um, there were so many things that she had to break, so many bad habits. And one of those things was the fact that I would not connect my series. So I came in her gym, training nine, and she put me down to level seven. So I dropped two levels in a matter of two weeks. And um, every single day I would come in there and I would get on Diane's nerves because she would only allow me to do beam. I would cry the entire time, the entire time, to the point where I wasn't even scared to do the series anymore. I was scared because I couldn't see the beam because I had tears in my eyes the entire time. That year, I competed at level seven, won state, and the following year, after I got my connection, I won eight state and went on to regionals. And in that story, in that lesson, it taught me to, to be a winner humbly. And because Diane said I could. So that was one of the things, like, I remember waking up one day and we were going to, I don't remember if it was eight or seven or eight regionals or state or whatever. And I told my mom, I was like, I'm about to win. And she was like, Kim, you know, you can't say that. You can't say that. You know, you have to go through. You have no idea what, the, what these other gymnasts are going to do. And I was like, no, because Diane said I could. So, needless to say, I won. But every day at the end of practice, you gave me a hug and you told me you believed in me. Then I would come over your house after grabbing hoagies and we chill. One time I came over, I don't remember what it was for, was probably doing her hair. As Linda said, she always loved for me to do her hair. And um, she said that she, she used to brag all the time about how I was the one that would always make her beautiful. I didn't believe that because she was already beautiful, right? But that's what she said. Um, before I got started, I ended up taking a nap on the couch. And after I woke up, I never forget what her, one of the things that she said to me. It was, um, she said that there was the biggest compliment to her that I felt comfortable enough to sleep in her home. When I woke up, I had a blanket and a pillow. First question out of, out of your mouth was, was I hungry? 
and I'm always hungry, guys. So she knew <laughs> she knew I, she knew I wanted to be fed. And that was one thing about Diane. She always made me feel so at home, and she always took care of me. She was like a second mom. Um, people at competitions thought that she was my mom or my aunt, and I didn't deny it. You called me your beautiful all the time, to the point which that's what I introduced myself as that now as of February of this year. I have to explain my sentimental reasoning for this unofficial name change, but I don't mind it. You taught me to love myself inside and out, and it reminded me of how beautiful I was to you and anyone else who could really see and understand the real me inside and out. While I'm still learning this about myself today, hearing people say my name, beautiful, is a constant reminder of who I was and what you saw in me. You instilled so much confidence in me, and I thank you for that. Some of our best memories together will be too long to share at this moment. Like the time we were at the meet and a bunch of little girls came up asking for your autograph. Or the times you would allow me to walk around to the judges' table and steal candy before the meet. Or the time you slapped me across my face at regionals because I walked off on you after a bad set. The good times. I never, respect, I never disrespected you again after that. Or our first trip to Florida where <laughs> we went to this place called Shuck and Dive and I had my first crawfish. Tom already told me that um, if I see him asking for a flask, that I was taking too long, and I see you over there, so I'm, I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> I had a dream about you one night. I can't remember the context of the dream, but I was in some hall-like building. It was weird because my stepmom, who you'd never met, walked through the door fussing about something. But right behind her walked in you. You had your finger over your mouth as if to tell me to keep me quiet from, uh, that you were there. At that very moment, I started sobbing. I fell to the floor, my entire body got weak. In the dream, my stepmom looked back and turned around to see what it was that I saw, but you had vanished already. I woke up in tears. I interpreted the dream to mean that you're always there when I least expect it. Give me wisdom and guidance like you always did. I'll never take that for granted. I don't know if you saw the tribute tattoo that I got for you. The purpose was more so to serve as a reminder of what you meant to me in the world. It's since become a piece of uh, conversation. It's on my wrist. The tattoo was of the Olympic rings, the letter D for Diane, and underneath is the year 1984. Everywhere I go, people ask me if I've been to the Olympics I wish, not really though. <laughs> this is where I get to tell your story and educate people on your legacy. I talk, to pe I talk to random people every day at my job and the stories I share with them about you, I'm sure they share with their little aspiring gymnasts back home as well. I love and miss you so much. Thank you again for all that you've done for me and my family. You are truly a friend to me and I honestly wouldn't be the same person I am without your influential presence in my life. And as Diane always said after a conversation, as Linda also said earlier, take care of you. You're beautiful. Kim. Yeah.